Hello everybody, video here for you today. This is the retro no cap recap of the Curse of Oak Island Season 7, Episode 12 called Fortified. Originally aired February 4th, 2020. If you missed any of my recaps of previous and future episodes, there's a link to my Oak Island playlist in the upper right. Let's get into it. Do 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 do. Previously, on the Curse of Oak Island, people have been looking for an incredible treasure for 229 years. Following the flooding of the swamp by Hurricane Dorian, the team is pumping the ocean water slash rain out of the swamp. Before the setback, they had already drained the swamp earlier this season. Rick says they just have to wait another two days or so. He further says the focus is on the area shown here to determine if the paved area is natural or man-made. In the war room, the team gathers to hear the Dendo chronology results on the bump out area structure found in line with the slipway more inland. By the same testing, the slipway tested as 1769, which is almost 30 years before the money pit discovery in 1795. Craig says it's a little bit of a head scratcher. 1741, 28 years older than the slipway sample. In that time frame, Oak Island was supposed to be virtually uninhabited. In addition, the structure was 10 feet under the current day water level and would still have been below the water level in 1741. Doug reminds that there were raids on Fort Lewisburg by the British and the fort was taken in 1746. He suggests that perhaps the French had something to hide and did so on Oak Island. The next day, Rick and Doug travel 300 miles northeast to Lewisburg to explore connections from the fort to Oak Island. Doug says that if there were French involvement on the island in that time period, perhaps the examples of French engineering at the fort could show a link. Completed in 1740, the fort features two miles of stone walls which were as much as 30 feet high and 8 feet thick. There was also a vast network of tunnels dug beneath it. Meanwhile, on Lot 27, west of the swamp, Gary, Jack, and Peter arrived to metal detect. Having previously found a chisel there that Gary believes is connected to the 1300 swages, found on lot 21 he is eager to search 27 again since the hurricane may have stirred up other items he soon finds this lead piece that he says is made from a musket ball mold and the ball would have been snipped away from the rest of the lead gary dates it 1700s to early 1800s on lot 27's beach, Gary finds this conglomerate that contains an axe head that he estimates is no newer than the 1700s. Rick and Doug arrive at Fort Lewisburg and are greeted by their guide, historian Sarah McInnes. Coincidentally, or not, the money pit was discovered by Daniel McInnes. She says that only one-fifth of the fort remains from what was originally built. The Duke Danville, whose family name is Rochefoucauld, known to have close associations with the Knights Templar, is interred in the Fort Chapel under the altar. He led a doomed French armada that was tasked with taking the fort back from the British. After weather delays and other bad luck, they never arrived. Doug had previously found a ship's log from one of the armada vessels and it said that after the Duke's death, the treasures on the ship were to be buried in a deep pit with a tunnel on the shore of an island of oaks. Originally buried at Halifax Harbor, the British sent his remains to the fort after it was returned to the French. Back outside, Doug spots this drain system. A French drain is often the way the Oak Island flood tunnels are described and evidence of that construction type has been found on the island. 
Sarah also tells them that the tunnel behind this red door that was filled with explosives to stop enemies trying to attack that way was built through marshland, drawing a parallel to Oak Island's swamp. They can't examine it due to a bat colony that has moved in, but Sarah provides the plans that reveal the tunnel is shaped like a cross and this picture. She also reveals that the tunnel is 180 feet, which shows the type of engineering needed for the things done on Oak Island did exist at the time. Back in the swamp, geologist Terry Matheson said these stones would be found 120 feet down in the money pit area, not this close to the surface in a swamp. The next day, after seeing these stones of the paved area, geoscientist Dr. Ian Spooner is not ready to pronounce it man-made, but says he is considering it. Archaeologist Laird Niven says he can't come up with any explanation other than human intervention. Another day and more water removed, Dr. Spooner does say it has to be man-made. If a glacier dumped these stones here, it would be piles and not so level. Rick sends Marty pictures and calls him to tell him Dr. Spooner's analysis. Marty also asks about Lair's opinion. Dr. Spooner says that he thinks the eye was an excavated area and the paved area was a filled area. And then seaward over the deepest part of the swamp is all in a straight line. So it would make sense for the paved area to be a work surface if people brought ships in. It has long been suggested by Fred Nolan and others that there were once two islands and the swamp was artificially created to hide evidence. Narrator Robert Clotworthy closes the episode out by pointing out that the discovery of the paved area is a breakthrough, just as important as any artifact, and could lead the way to changing the history of North America, if not the entire world. I'll be continuing retro no-cap recaps of seasons 7 and 8 through this fall. All of the other episodes are already done and are in my Oak Island playlist. Season 12 of The Curse of Oak Island will begin airing November 12, 2024, and I'll be posting no-cap recaps of the new episodes Tuesdays late night as they air. I'm also doing retro no-cap recaps of seasons 2 through 4 of The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch. Seasons 1 and 5 are all done and are in the Skinwalker Ranch playlist. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, like, and comment. Siempre avanti.